Hello, boys and girls. Today we're going to be reading chapter eight of our Who Was P.T. Barnum book. The title of this chapter is Joining the Circus. By 1861, the Civil War had begun in the United States, and Taylor passionately supported Abraham Lincoln and the Union side. When he was younger, he had not given much thought to the question of slavery, but by the time the war be had begun, he had begun become a very serious abolitionist, which was a person who believed that slavery in the United States needed to end. He produced pro-union plays and spoke out against slavery in lectures at his American Museum. The war convinced Taylor that he should enter politics. He wanted to continue to speak out against slavery. Taylor was elected to the Connecticut State General Assembly in April 1865 as a member of the Union or Republican Party. In July, Taylor was giving a speech to the State Assembly when he received terrible news. The American Museum had burned down. A fire had started in the furnace in the basement. The museum was destroyed in less than an hour. Taylor immediately went to work rebuilding the museum. He found another building just a mile north of the old location and collected new items to exhibit. Just two months later, the second American museum opened. Taylor fought in the state assembly to change Connecticut laws so African Americans could vote, but the laws didn't pass. He ran for the United States Congress in 1867, but lost to his own distant relative named William Barnum. Taylor decided to buy a townhouse in New York City. He could easily attend to his business there and visit his daughters, who were all married and living in the city by then. He and Charity had another house in Bridgeport near the Connecticut seashore. Charity wasn't well, and the doctor suggested that the sea air might make her feel better. In 1868, the second American Museum burn down. Can you believe it, boys and girls? This time, Taylor didn't want to rebuild. He was 58 years old. He wondered if he should simply retire. Then in the late 1870s, Taylor got an offer he could not resist. William, William C. Coop and Dan Costello, two circus managers, ran a show called The Egyptian Caravan. They wanted Taylor to partner with them to create a new show. Taylor had been bored and missed the excitement of show business. He quickly agreed. The new circus had performers, a collection of live animals, and an exhibition of interesting objects like wax figures, mechanical toys, and even a mummy. Coop and Costello managed the day-to-day -day matters of the circus. Taylor contributed his famous name and genius for publicity. Taylor had flyers printed with stories and pictures about all different acts in the show, now called P.T. Barnum's Great Traveling Museum, Menagerie, Caravan, and Hippodrome. They were sent ahead of the circus to each upcoming city and distributed throughout the nearby towns. By the time the circus arrived, the townspeople knew all about the show and were anxious to see it. The new show started its first tour in April of 1871. When audiences arrived, they walked through the menagerie of animals and the sideshow of museum curiosities. Then they entered the big tent to watch the performers, acrobats, clowns, and musicians, and animal trainers. It was a huge success. Although the circus tents could hold thousands of people, the shows regularly sold out. The shape of the show was the problem. Years earlier, circuses had started out as shows featuring daredevil horseback riders who rode in a circle around the ring-shaped arena. The circular shape became standard even as other performers were added. As circuses became more popular, their owners added more rows of seats. But more rows meant people sat farther away from the show. They couldn't see what was happening in the ring. Taylor solved this problem by adding a second ring, another circular arena under the big tent. This allowed more people to sit under the tent. Everyone could see the performances in both rings.
And now to finish the chapter, a special guest. Taylor was now 62 years old, but he was still working hard to promote the circus and dream up new ideas to make it even better. He added a new line to 1872 show's posters, The Greatest Show on Earth. The phrase caught on, and soon that what was everyone called P.T. Barnum's Circus. Then he had an idea that would change circuses forever. Why not move the show by train instead of horse and wagon? Taylor's circus train could be loaded and unloaded quickly. It could travel up to 100 miles overnight, much farther than the old horse and wagons. The performers could also sleep by sleep better than they could on bumpy wagons. By the time they arrived in the next town in the morning, everyone was ready for a full day of performing. In 1873, Taylor traveled to Europe on business. While he was in Germany, he received news that Charity had died. Taylor was very sad. He remained in his room alone for several days. He and Charity had been married for 44 years. When he emerged, Taylor was ready con to continue with the business of running the, the greatest show on earth. earth. Thank you, boys and girls, for your great listening. We will read chapter number nine tomorrow. It is called Jumbo, a little preview picture for you. Bye. Here it is, Jumbo. See what that's about.